malaria until around about the turn of the century was really a disaster, particularly in Africa, it was genuinely a disaster. There's been enormous changes since then in terms of international funding and interventions. In the last, uh, certainly 10 years, there have been massive progress in malaria control and results in terms of uh, reducing the number of cases, uh, reduction of number of uh, uh, mortality of uh, people who die of malaria, so this has been a great success. Despite the gains, there's some major potential problems, one of which is drug resistance and the other is insecticide resistance, so we definitely shouldn't be complacent. What we've learned from anti-malarial drug resistance before through history is that it spreads and that it will definitely occur. And if we don't keep up to date with the current picture, we don't know where to go next. We are trying actually to understand the factors uh, affecting the efficacy of the drugs we are currently using. We know that resistance to these drugs has emerged in Southeast Asia. But for the moment, the resistant has not yet emerged in Africa, where most of malaria cases are. Parasites, bacteria, viruses can develop resistance to drug treatments quite rapidly. And that can be very, very troubling because you then have a disease outbreak with no way of treating it. The Worldwide Anti-Malarial Resistance Network is a collaboration of over 230 research groups or institutions from around the world. Now that's really powerful because it means that we can collect data from so many different studies. We have over 230 different clinical trials that have occurred around the world. One of the questions we're um, looking into closely at the moment is the spread of resistance through looking at the parasite genetics. And then we can try actually to find uh, the places where resistance will emerge next. That is a very complex, a very large-scale project to target resources, people, understanding as to how malaria spreads, how it develops, where pockets of resistance are occurring. There are in the world many research groups involved in the control and elimination of malaria. None of these groups alone can succeed and it's really this multidisciplinary approach, this work together which is likely to be successful.